All right, welcome back to Das Lab. Um, today we've got a repair, investigate sort of issue going on uh, with this uh, hot tub heater controller box. Um, it's only part of the whole situation. There is also a um, an old controller here that plugs into down here into one of these connectors. Um, what the problem was, I'm not really troubleshooting it. Uh, the guy was told that this relay is sticking. Um, a pump, pump one, is continuing uh, on even when it's selected to go off. So what we're going to do is take this board out and try to investigate that relay. So I'm not troubleshooting the entire functioning of this hot tub board, but I am going to look at that relay. Apparently it is a common problem with these relays weld the contacts shut and when you're told to open they don't. Alright so I'm gonna have to mark up some of these uh, cables to make sure that I get the right ones on back in the right way as I disconnect things. Okay I'll well, get set up and We'll start at it. Alright, so keeping in mind that uh, I don't have any Brady markers down here, I ended up having to go old school and uh, do a drawing as to which connectors. There was only four, uh, five actually. Two big power cords coming off of this board, uh, small, some small little control signal coming off that board, and then these two probably sensors for. Uh, the heater coming off over here. So everything's intact and I know what to what to attack and what to tackle and what to leave alone and hopefully get it back in the right spot. Um, it says here use open end wrench to hold the nut so I don't want to turn these. Apparently the owner of this had already been in here and uh, worked on some of these so I want to be able to take these nuts off without turning the big nuts in there. I don't know how tight these are, but... That's not going to work, is it? the owner about this bent copper uh, bus and he said yeah that was him so at least he was aware of it and I'm aware of it and everybody's aware of it I don't know what's going on with this heater before why he's had this off but he had to make these seals Okay, next will be done to screw this board and get it out. Okay, so all the screws are out. I had to take this board out because, of course, there was a screw right directly below it. And uh, let's take this out. And actually, So the relay we're looking at is apparently one of the, I think it's this one he said. I'm going to look back at uh, what, okay, there's something interesting, some scorch marks, hopefully you can see that, and uh, that looks like a pretty bad solder joint coming off of that relay. There's the two resistors and it's coming off that relay. So maybe that's our problem. And it's not this relay after all. So I might have to go see if I can get a schematic for these. That looks like some power 
coming across there. Relay after relay, there's a fuse over there. Okay, so I'm gonna do a bit of research and figure out what's going on with these. Okay, so I'm looking at it and uh, I believe he said it was this relay. Again, this is coming from what the owner of this told me that the repair or the service rep said. So looking at the back, we've got um, these two relays here. Okay, and the problem is that there's a motor that stays on all the time even when you select it to shut off. So from what I can tell, and I haven't pulled it up yet, but there's only four uh, pads associated with each of these relays. Okay, there's a lot of pads down here, but it's only uh, two big ones and two small ones. So when I go at it with the uh, with the ohm meter here, hopefully you can see that. So across the two small ones, and again, we're, we're working with the in the 240 volt range here with all kinds of uh, a big current that these are switching. You can see I've got uh, 262 ohms across there and 262 ohms roughly around there. And I believe that's the coil of the um, relay. And these would be the switched contacts. And you can see there my meter's working. Let's just go down here. And you can see we've got continuity there open there exact same relay same numbers and everything but we've got a uh, short there so that would indicate that this is fused shut and just like the guy said um, the motor will continue to run okay so I'm gonna do the research on the actual part number and uh, see what's going on and I'm still really <laughs> really concerned about that scorch right there um, don't even know if it has anything to do with anything it's on this pad which goes up to the part of the heater probably through this relay here so in any event we are going to be cleaning that up and resoldering it okay all right so just to give you a look, that's what's going on in that bad solder joint there. You can zoom in here. Okay, using my handy dandy microscope. So that's a nasty solder joint. Isn't that lovely? Good photography. Yeah, so we'll clean that up. And the relays we're looking at are... Zettler. Z. Good. Okay, will this focus? Maybe too much light here, let me turn that off. Yeah, that helps. Alpha Zulu 250, or Alpha Zulu 2. Let's see what we can find out. Okay, so yeah, did my research, single pole, single throw, normally open contacts. Now, um, I was cheating on you. I, I give this a few love taps, and looky now, what happens? Um, one meter still working right, okay. So my uh, old coil, normally open, that's still working. I got good contact. And now after having beat on this, okay, it's open. So I must have uh, let go of the uh, the contacts that were welded, and they have sprung apart. So I'm still going to replace this relay. Um, and in the meantime, I'm going to see how much uh, it is to get one and how quickly I can get one. Um, 
<laughs> it is the definite era of online shopping this year, uh, but we'll see how quick I can get a part. Probably somebody might have one in service, in, in store somewhere in Canada here, but, um, and also I don't like that. I'm going to fix that up. So we'll gear up to, um, to do that solder joint and you know what? I'm probably going to just take that out too. Let me warm things up and I'll be back. Okay, so what I really want to do uh, is clean this up as best as I can. It's it's a component part of the relay underneath. It's not one of these resistors. It's it's the relay, so I can't take it out. So I've got to clean it up in situ. So I've got my uh, little burnishing tool here, which is uh, little pieces of fiberglass strands that come out, and you can moving in and out and uh, I'm getting in and just trying to clean it up and I'm going to hit this with flux next you know what now that I cleaned that up it doesn't look half as bad as it did so I don't know I don't know where that came from but we're still going to touch that up a little bit we're going to that up Got that. I've got some liquid flux here that we push down like that and it uh, comes out. I've learned to uh, solder. Uh, you know, as a kid growing up, I did a lot of soldering speaker wires and all that stuff, and, and I didn't understand the, uh, the benefits of using flux until through my work I had to learn to uh, solder at a military level, military quality level and I took a few courses and um, it was all about the flux and uh, and what a difference it made in my soldering quality, the rework, the joints um, all the way around it really seemed to uh, help so if you can, I don't care what you're soldering. Obviously, if you're doing plumbing, you know all about flux. But if you're doing electronics, you're just even trying to get two wires together. If you're not using flux, well, you're gonna get, you're gonna reap what you sow. I think we got a nice solder joint on there now. Feel pretty confident with that. Then you want to get rid of the extra flux that you have on there. You don't want that kicking around. Yeah. Kleenex, some sort of wipe. And these were a bunch of baby wipes we had that were uh, dried out. Haven't had a baby in the house for 10 years, so I guess uh, don't need them anymore. And by cleaning it up, you know, it helps that if this goes again, if something else happens in here, I mean, what, what really caught my attention was the, uh, the streaks more than the bad solder joint, and they, they pointed right back to here, so... Uh, if you got a clean board and if you're troubleshooting and you're not sure something's going to work, keep it clean and uh, that may uh, help you troubleshoot again in the future. Now should I be putting some conformal coating back on here? Probably seeing as how it's a hot tub. But See this how this has been worked on a number of times, and I don't have any. I'm not going to get too worried about it. Maybe that's why. I don't even know. Maybe it's a saltwater hot tub. Maybe that's what happened. Something dripped down in there. Okay, next part. I'm trying to get these bad boys out. Let's make sure we're working on the right relay. Let's just give it uh, an extra little dot. Okay, so we know which relay we're working on. 
So once again, even for desoldering, to help things flow nicely, I am going to use flux. I don't have an actual um, solder sucker uh, machine. I do have a heat uh, surface mount machine, and I do have one of these. Let's just see what happens. Let's try this first. Solder, solder braid, solder wick. Keeping my tip as clean as possible. It's a lot of heat, that's a big big sink there, so. These are going to wick up. I don't know if it's capillary action or what the fundamental is that uh, allows it to, once it's liquid, to get up into the braid, but uh, hmm, that's a lot of solder, and it's not coming up very easily. What if we do this? Slowly but surely, I think it's coming up in there. And I don't, uh, I don't have my big uh, spring-loaded solder sucker either. That's uh, a thing of the past. That worked. That worked. So. That cleaned up sort of good. I'm gonna get some more flux on there. Tip clean. Pretty good there. Small pads, not much to. It gets hot. All right, I think we need to concentrate on these bad boys a bit more. And once you can get, you know, half of them out or something like that, you can start to pry on it. And, uh... I got solder in there.
getting it. By golly, I almost got it. Back onto this bad boy a bit more. I think we're almost at the point where I can get a screwdriver in there. Let's see if we can gently destroy the board. If you can just get one in there. And start to put the pressure on it. Can you still see it? Uh huh. And. Uh huh. There we go, it's partly out. Or I've ripped the legs out, one or the other. that side, touch that side, and we're free. We have desoldered it. And we didn't destroy it. I don't see any major melting there or anything like that. Okay, while I'm here, I'm going to clean up these holes and it's going to make it a little easier to um, insert the new one and not without damaging it. So, a little bit more flux. Nice clean solder tip. And just allow it to wick in. That looks like a nice clean hole. Not destroying the pad that it's on. Good. That looks horrible. Put it in a nice round hole. Everybody likes a round hole. Now and again. Okay. Just about there. Okay, and I'm going to check it out on the other side. Make sure we don't have any nastiness over there. I think that we would be able to get those back in nicely. Now, just one more thing I'm going to do. And I'm going to clean these up. Oops, sorry. Just in case I have to insert this back in for some reason, let's say I can't get the parts, I will want these to go in nicely. So I'm just kind of cleaning them up a little bit. Getting any solder off so that if I got to put them back into those holes, that they will go. And also keeping in mind that um, I may have bent them in my prying operation. So you want them to go back in nice and easy. Okay, that's it for the soldering for now. And I'm going to just clean them up a little bit. And prep for the next job, which will be installing the new relay. Again, a little bit of uh, isopropyl alcohol. Uh, I got brand new brushes. I should be using them. Problem with these brushes is the they're too long. The brushes are too long. So I. And I'm going to make a mess and give it a 
haircut. Alright, so I've given it a haircut and it makes it a little bit more manageable and uh, so that you can get some a little bit more scrubbing action of your bristles. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, and I, I don't really want to go at this with the, uh, the little burnishing tool. Um, there's really no need. So we just want to wash away that, uh, that flux. Oh, and all my dots. Hey, how about that? How about that? Isopropyl alcohol takes away that those uh, pen marks. Okay, check the other side. Make sure that's clean. Clean. Dab, 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 dab. Dab, dab, dab. And just out of curiosity, will this go back in if I had to? can't do it that way. So from this direction, could I get it back in? Might need a little bit of finagling. Maybe clean those holes up a little bit better. It looks like through hole, through hole plating, so not that there's actually any connections, but those, um, it's not just a surface issue, those, those holes go right through the uh, the board so the little there's like a little cylinder and I think I could get it those two for the coil are in and the big power ones they, they need a little bit of work but I think without uh, too much effort I could get get them in it could be either the holes aren't big enough or there's still some residual solder on the relay okay so that's it for now I'm gonna get a new relay um, find out how quickly I can get one and uh, I'll see you when I get the new parts all right folks welcome back I don't know how it's been about a week or two and uh, we got the part in uh, 35 bucks uh, delivered uh, right to the door came in this morning took about uh, yeah, I don't know 10 days maybe Something like that. No, I haven't. No knife. Um, it's always nice when you can get a direct replacement. Um, you know, so there's no there's no mystery about is it going to work or fit. Same manufacturer, it's the same shape, same amps, and 151A. 150 exact same part number so that's a good thing we're off to a good start oh which is the real what's the okay so one of the things i noticed and it's gonna go in down here is uh as good as i cleaned the holes out always a little bit of room you know it's a tight fit going in so what I'm gonna do is uh, use the old uh, finger drill here and see if I got a bit that's a good size for just cleaning up those holes and oh yeah, yeah there's something in there that's pretty good I don't want to make them bigger I just want to make sure that they're round and clean that's a good size to start with that's a good size to start with. So, you know, the advantages of using a, uh, a finger drill like this is, uh, you know, you can imagine with a big drill, it gets a little aggressive. I, I remember uh, if you've ever smacked your fingers with a hammer, like old Bendy here, um, you know, and you get the, the black uh, blood coming in there, it could really be quite painful. And if you just get a drill bit and drill through into that black part and relieve the pressure it really helps 
And <laughs> my dad, once he got the big, this is before the days of uh, cordistrals, he had the big Black and Decker, Pecker Wrecker, and uh, he was about to drill into his finger, his thumb, and he thought, you know, what's going to happen when it breaks through? It's going to go right through. So he took the bit out, and he just worked it through. It was a nice sharp bit, and it cut a hole in there and relieved the pressure. So uh, when you're doing fine work like this, you don't need, okay, you know, a little bit of back and forth. you got to tighten it up a fair bit because it's uh, not much meat for it to grab onto, but, you know, it gets in there. Does the job, cleans that hole out. All right, so you gotta sometimes be the circuit board gynecologist. And that'd probably just be enough to get those uh, legs on that new relay to uh, come in there. I'm, I'm certainly, I don't think I'm making them any bigger, but I am just cleaning them out. <clears throat> All right, let's put that side for now. Don't want to lose those. Mm. Ah, okay. So as far as I can tell there's no um, there's no pads on the side of the board so I don't really have to worry about through hole soldering. I mean, there's you know a little heat sink pad. It's it's through holes. It's through holes, but there's you know I'm not worried about getting a good connection on here. But when I do put this on for the final time, I'm going to make sure that I put uh, a little bit of flux in there. It's still tight. So the bo bottom two holes are coming through there. I really don't want to... I mean, I could I could start heating them up and uh, getting them through, but I don't like that. It's still too much force. I'd rather it just sat in there nicely and then I can, you know, bend the pins a little bit and solder. So, all right, what are we going to do next? A little bit more. I'm going to use the, the drill as a file, right? We've all done that. And then just snap it, which I don't really want to do today. Let's see if those will... Oh, okay. First of all, I'm going the wrong way. I was... Wiggling it this way, but it looks like it's an upy downy sort of thing. Okay, it turns like there's a there's a lot of stuff I could have they are, they are quite big holes. Okay. Well, yeah, that's quite a bit bigger. So let's see. Still not. Nothing else. Uh, I hear there's nothing else. I'm heating this going in properly. And that is the. Funny, one of the pins is flat in this direction, and one of the pins is kind of flat in this direction, and they look like they're pre-tinned. They're pretty bulky with solder on there. Well, one more try. I do have a bigger bit, but you know, is it worth it? Too big. Put 
I think we can try the bigger bit. And then we'll get the, the solder flows nicer and if you got a nice good hole for it to go around and whatnot. So, whoops. Why, uh, why not? Why is that so stiff? I think this bit is going to be about as big as I can get in that collet. Nice and tight. And... There we go. One more try. Come on, baby. Well, that's, that's it didn't fall in, but I got everything in there without bending it. And it's every bit as flat to the board as the other one. Okay, I say we uh, heat things up. I got my big soldering tip on there still. Yeah. yeah, so a big heat sink, soldering tip, some of that schmoo. I have all my uh, all my heat creating devices on timers so that uh, when something happens, the doorbell rings, or you hear somebody start screaming, and you hear the word, there's blood everywhere, and you go running out. Uh, I learned that the hard way. I, I remember something happened with one of the kids, and I got out, and I got talking to the neighbors, and blah, 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 blah. And next thing you know, I come back in, and there on my workbench was my soldering iron, uh, still plugged in. Or was it, I think it was a hot glue gun or something like that. Anyways, I didn't feel comfortable with that, and I thought, uh, this should be on a timer. Okay, so I'm going to pop that back out. Pop, see it pop. I'm going to clean up these pads a little bit. So that's your fiberglass tipped uh, burnishing tool. Does a really nice job. I think we saw that already. Same thing on the other side. And then uh, clean, clean, clean. And then, now the only thing is, and I'm not too, too worried about it, is I'm going to put flux on this side a little bit so it flows nice, but I'm not going to be able to clean it off after. So, hopefully, hopefully, um, the flux won't, you know, interact with the plastic on here and cause anything too bad to happen. Okay, I better get this warmed up. Good healthy a bit of flux on there and again I think I talked about flux and uh, soldering I, I, I can't even see myself trying to solder without flux anymore I would just say I guess I mean if it was the right emergency you'd have to but uh, 
You're just asking for trouble. Okay, so that's in. I don't think I need to clamp it or anything like that. Okay. And then I hope I got my diagram while well, this is warming up, my diagram ready. And which type of solder am I going to use? Let's go for the big one here. What have we got here? Uh, rosin core. Uh, made in Mexico. Trying to see what the ratio is here. It's a pound. There's usually lead and tin. Uh, made in Mexico. Huh, I can't do it. Oh, there is, huh? No. Okay, I'm just about up to temperature. Clean the tip. Make sure it'll take heat and melt solder. Where are we going to go first? Let's go for the big guy first. Nice and hot. And I'm going on the opposite side of the pin. And when this side is ready, it's going to take all it needs. And up. Likewise, I'm on that flat side. Heating that up. The pad and the, uh, the pin. Get it flowing. And it's starting to flow now. With that pad covered and up. That looks pretty good. Pretty good. Much smaller pins. And up. And up. You can uh Need a little bit more. I got a little bit of a pocket over here. So I'm just going to heat that whole thing up, and you can see it melt. You can see it melt, and a little bit more solder, and up. Much better. Shiny, not doesn't have that gray color to it. I'm going to turn that off. Yeah, it doesn't look foggy, and there's not too much solder. Never did test the relay. Never did test it. Because we know we fixed the other one by uh, by hitting it. I had a <laughs> I have a bread machine upstairs. You may have seen the, uh, was it the banana bread video? No, it was the making the, making the, uh, dinner rolls video. And, uh, the relay wasn't clicking over. And I had to, I had to hit it on the side to get it to go. Okay, so, a relay. Good, open, open. So if I was to put the required voltage there, probably 12, 24, 40, what is it? Is it 120? Yeah, a variety of different voltages in there. Uh, it would click over and then we'd get continuity. So I'm happy with that. Let's connect it over there and let's connect it over there. Okay, let's put this thing in. Let's clean up this board because we got the flux on there and I want to make sure I get that flux cleaned up. And. That. And the old stubby. Where's the stubby? There it is. 
Oh, baby. Oh. Ooh. Damn, Marie. The old filling station. Every once in a while, you gotta just fill her up. And now I got some here. I can just take that. Clean that up. The old uh, dried out baby wipe. I'm not 100% sold on these. I don't think I would brand these as a lint free uh, option. They do leave behind a bit of residue, but uh, not the end of the world. In this particular application, but for certain other applications, I wouldn't say that these baby wipes are the great, greatest thing. I use them actually for. Cleaning the guns, right? But, uh, yeah, see, look at that. They come up right. It's like using a piece of toilet paper. It's like wiping your ass on it. Actually, that's literally what you do. They're for better baby wipes. <laughs> so it's like it's toilet paper. Well, that's exactly what it is. So what, do, what am I thinking? What were you thinking? Okay. That's done. That's off. I'm going to put that over there without burning myself to death. And. Okay, let's see. Let's see. Oh, yeah. There's a whole other part to this, isn't there? That's garbage. Okay, I'm going to clean up a bit and then I'll, we'll come back and put this. Alrighty. <clears throat> a little bit more uh, sane here now. I went and uh, decorrelled this uh, connector that uh, the owner had done. I mean, <laughs> when I first saw that, I made sure to point it out and say, what happened here? He goes, oh, I did that. I did that. And I said, okay. As long as we know who did that. Um, because uh, I'll, I'll break my own stuff. I don't. I don't need to. Uh, I mean, I'll, I'll break things all on my own. I don't need to have somebody else uh, start breaking stuff for me, and so I can get blamed for it. Because I'll, I'll screw something up. Try not to. I try not to. I mean, I'm not prone for snapping off screw heads because I've learned. It's a learned behavior, right? I mean, of course I've snapped them off. I understood the forces involved, and uh, I also understood how horrible, this is magnetic, how horrible of a situation it is when you snap off screw heads. So, uh, you don't, you don't, you know, if I, I, I make mistakes, I, but you learn from them. And you uh, definitely, okay, if you lost one on here, is it the end of the world? Probably not. Um, but you know, if it's a head bolt on a 1972 CB350, interesting noise, then uh, yeah, you might be in trouble. Let's get them all started first. This is not seismically qualified. There's no need to uh, torque them down to, you know, 25 uh, foot pounds or something like that. As long as the board's not going to rattle around with these six bolts, there's no need to really go uh, too tight, I don't think. Right? I was working on a job once and there was a pH meter and the crew before me had worked on it 
and uh, the supervisor says, yeah, uh, he's got it all in, and it was in a bucket like this, and but except the bucket was about this deep, and there was all these cards, and, uh, and the display was out further out. It's got all in. All you got to do is go in uh, and set up the final calibration. And I, I was thinking, well, that's strange. Somebody worked on this all day, and, and they didn't do the final calibration. It's not that big of a deal. And I wondered why. When I went in, I turned it on, powered it up, and there was smoke coming out of it. I said, oh no, that's not good. And uh, the guy had gone in, and these were flathead screws, and somehow or another, he sheared off. I, I was, I saw that the, the board was loose, and it was mounted this way. And I was trying to put a new screw in, so I had a screw starter with a flathead screw, and I was trying to get the screw, I could not get the screw started. I could not get the screw started. Because he had snapped the heads off. How, to this day, to this day, how he could have snapped off the screw heads on a flathead screw with a screw starter on three of the four bolts that hold that in. I, I just don't know. I can see stripping them, but snapping them off. So what had happened is the heads had fallen down into the cards and they were short circuiting on the power supply. And that's where the smoke was coming from. So that meter never ran again. You know what? <laughs> You're probably yelling at me because you've probably seen this too. Those are ugly. Now I don't know if there's some sort of a cleaning agent on there or something, but I guess there's going to be one now. Those look horrible. Where's my little scrubby? Scrubby. That's what happens when all of your tools are silver handled. Yeah, I don't, uh, I don't like the looks of that at all. I mean, I don't have any conductive grease, maybe that's what's on there, but it, uh, now he said he had to go in here to, uh, seal up these. This is the heater part, right, for the hot tub. And he had to seal up the, uh, this, he had it apart for some reason, so. And it's looking a little bit better, at least on the, uh, actually, oof. looks like crap. What does this surface look like? Oh, that's not too bad. Not too bad. Did I forget something? This board. I can imagine if this leaked, you'd be getting water, uh, pressurized hot 
tub water all over the electronics. Okay, you can certainly see how they get bent. Okay. And one more thing to put on. And then all the wires. And this had one mounting screw and the rest were all uh, just uh, clip-ons. Snappy, snappy. Is that a very tight fit? Is that how that went on? Or was that upside down? That was upside down, believe it or not. Why didn't you tell me? Hang on a second here. Okay, now the long one just entered the room, but yeah, okay, this looks a bit better. Clicky, clicky. Snappy, snappy. Snappy, but no breaky. Yeah, it's good, good enough, I guess. Okay, now for the crazy part. I see I've got... Where the hell does this go? That one... goes... I'm gonna get the polarity right, too. That goes... So there's five down here. One, two, three, four, five. And that one goes... There, what the hell is that noise? That one goes there. This one goes into number two. And I didn't write down black red, but uh, I guess that's going to go that way. And this one will feed underneath. And that goes into number three. At least from my perspective. And the big black one goes to yeesh, right I got the fuse. Um, okay, the white one. <laughs> the white one goes to what? One, two, three, four, five. Oh, okay, yeah. Oh, that's it, yeah. Right beside the relay. Okay, and this one goes, wow. A fuse. Aye! <laughs> Um, do you remember? Do you remember? Why don't you ever talk to me? You're so silent. Okay, I don't know. Here's what I got.
I've got the fuse it's almost like I've got the fuse and then it says black but there's nothing beside the fuse holder here that's the fuse there's one thing here that says black I uh, I'm going to have to review the video. And I hope to God it's on there. The black one goes to... There's a thing here that says black and then AC, but I can't guarantee that. Okay. I made a booboo. I'll be back. Yeah, okay. Fortunately, uh, I was able to see that it comes off of right there. I'm sure that's a good tight fit. And everything else looks good. Those are tight. Those are tight. Now the unfortunate thing is, I'm going to upload this video. We're not going to know whether it worked or not. We're not going to know whether it worked or not. I'll know, but you won't know. Maybe I'll put it in the, the comments or update some sort of a thing afterwards. But, uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll find out what, uh, what the owner has. So that's it. Uh, just a general relay repair. And, um, I don't know, we'll probably see some more of these in the future. Uh, that's all I got for you right now. Uh, keep it real, be safe, and don't get any on you. Don't forget to subscribe. There's a lot more cool videos down below on a whole wide variety of topics. Okay, see you later.